Hey, my name is Jesus Castillo, and in this video, you're going to learn about RSpec, mocks, and stops. So, what is a mock and what is a stop? First, let's take a look at this example. I have this code, it's a class, it's called number generator and it produces random numbers. And more specifically, it produces a string of length from one to 10, and the length is random. So I want to write a test for this method. But as you will see in a moment, we have a problem. We have this random function. And every time that we call this method, is going to change, it's going to produce a different result. So that's a problem with test because in a test we are testing a fixed result, right? So as you can see, I'm expecting that the random generator produces a string which is like this, it's five A's, so it's A, 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 right? But if I run this test, no, it passes, but if I run it again, it's failing. Why? Because there is a random component. It's a component, it's a part that we don't control, right? So how can we fix this? How can we take control of the random function so that we can test that this is working? Well, this is where the following syntax comes in we can write allow generator. So generator is an object of the of this class that we are testing. So we say allow generator to receive rand. So this rand is this rand right here, right? It's the random function or random method. And return five. I'm saying that I want this function to return five always. Now if I run this test, you will see it's passing and I can run it again and again and again and it will pass every time. Why? Because now we control the value. We control the value of the random function. So this is always returning five and that allows us to use a fixed value to test our method, or random method, right? So that's how you take control of something like this, of a, a, some external request or, or a random function. This one way to control it. So this is called a stop. A stop like this, right? This is different for a mock. A lot of people confuse mocks and stops. And you're going to see in a moment the difference. Stop is this. You basically control the value so that every time that this method or function is called, it's going to return the same value so that we can test it correctly. So that's a stop. Now, a mock is different because the, the intention is completely different of a mock. With a mock, we're not changing the value. What we want to do is to verify behavior. We want to verify, we want to check that a method does the right things, right? So let's see an example. I'm going to remove Let's remove this, and we're going to write a new test here as well. So let's say that I have a uh, class, it's called image flipper, for example. And the purpose of this class is to take an image and an image processor, so that's some program that knows how to work with images. And then it tells the image processor to flip the image. And that's the whole purpose of this class. 
if I write a test for that, will look something like this. Aspect scribe. Let's call this just like the class name. The it flips an image. I know what we're going to need is an image processor, but we don't have one, right? We don't have an image processor, so we can use what's called a test double. So to do that, you do double, and then you can pass some name. This can be anything, it's just an identifier. And let's call this processor, okay? And then we can say expect processor to receive. So this to receive is the same as the stop. But in here we're expecting, we're not just allowing. So before it was allow, now we're expecting this method to be called flip. That's the method that we want. And we can also say that we want the arguments. We can say that the argument is going to be image.jpg, for example, right? And then we can use this processor into the this class. So we can say image flipper the new. We, we can pass it this processor. Right, let's call this I am for because if it's a keyword, so that's not going to work. And let's do expect, let's do I'm flip uh, image.jpg. Okay, so this kind of test is a little different than your regular test because the expect, the expectation what we're taking is in the middle. Usually you have the expectation at the end, right? But this has to be before we run the code because we are setting up an expectation that the method is going to be called. Okay, so now we have our argument error and we can write our code. So we need an initialize to set the processor. Okay, so let's do that. Here we go. We can run the test. Now we get undefined method flip. So let's do that. Flip. Now we get run number of arguments. So let's pass an argument which is the file name. File. And now we get this error, and this one is important. It says expected one time with arguments, received zero times. So here is where the mocking part is coming in. The mock is saying, hey, I'm expecting you to call this flip method one time and with exactly this argument. But you only call you call it zero times. So how do we fix that? Well we can do processor.flip. If I do this, now we get expected with these arguments got no arguments. So let's pass the file. And we have a passing test. So what just happened here? Well, this processor, it could be a real processor, right? Could be like image magic is a real program that's used to manipulate or change images. Image image magic. It's written like this. Match, uh, magic. This is a real program that can flip an image, but we don't, we are not using this yet. And maybe we don't want to use this for our test. Why? Because maybe the flip op operation is slow 
um, because it's an external uh, object, an external dependency. So what we can do is to know that the flip method is going to be available in some way or another, and it's going to do what we want. So what I'm testing here is that given a valid processor that takes an image name and that knows how to flip an image, then it's going to work. That's what this is saying. And here we're testing that when I call the flip method, it's going to call the flip, the other flip method. So the, these two different flip methods, right? So this flip on my own class and this flip on the processor, right? And if you get confused by that, feel free to use a different name. For example, um, change image. And now you should be able to see that these are clearly different methods. So that's what we call a mock. A mock is testing the method call, is testing the behavior on another object. And why would you want to do this? Well, again, like I said, you can do this when you don't have the external thing available to you yet, right? Or when you want to have this external thing, but it's a slow, for some reason it's a slow, like it could be an API call, something like that, and then you can replace it by a mock. So that's mocks and stops on our spec. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please click the like button for me so I know that you like this video. And if you want to keep learning, watch more of my videos, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, and visit my website rubyguides.com. Thanks all for watching. I will see you in the next video.